in-depth, investigative. This is KXAN News Today. It is going to be dangerously cold again this morning and eventually we will climb out of this brutal cold but not until Wednesday at the earliest. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tom Miller. I'm Avery Travis. Now, despite the cold, Kristen's telling us we may see some sun today. I know that's going to be some good news for everybody. Hey, yeah, a ton of sunshine. In fact, just not going to feel like we're seeing the sun, unfortunately. <laughs> Let me show you what's going on outside this morning. Good Tuesday morning to you. Live look from Marble Falls, courtesy of our River City Grill Highland Furniture Camera there, showing clear conditions for the most part, but man, is it cold. Walking out the door this morning, I noticed that difference and I'll tell you what temperatures widespread teens in the hill country at the moment down to 10 degrees in Harper. These are your actual air temperatures, so not accounting for the wind yet 15 and burn it 16 in Lano. Looking at our Austin Metro temperatures. We've got most of us in the teens couple 20s out there in far eastern Travis County Maynard and the Berg uh, Austin Bergstrom Airport coming in at 20 Hayes County teens and 20s at the moment in our eastern county seeing the same kind of mix here. Uh, of temperatures between about 15 to 21 degrees. Now we factor in the wind and our feels like temperatures, our wind chills are sub 10 degrees everywhere, down to four with the wind chill in Georgetown, nine in Austin, three in Lano, one below zero is what it feels like in Fredericksburg right now. So unfortunately, this is a dangerous cold. You cannot spend any extended period of time outside because you're going to run the risk of frostbite on some of those exposed parts of your skin, like your face. So please be very mindful of that. We want to make sure we've got that heaviest coat we can find on this morning. Going to 33 this afternoon, most of us hovering near to just below freezing, but it will be dry. We've got sunshine today mainly sunny skies again tomorrow. In fact, we're not talking about rain until Sunday, but next week's rain chances are looking very good here in Central Texas. So we'll focus a lot on what's happening today with the cold, but I'm going to preview this change in our pattern here, giving us some wet weather late weekend coming up in your first morning forecast. Thank you, Kristen. Some breaking news from overnight. A fire now out at a two story vacant building off of Clayton Lane and Cameron Road, but you can see it was left in bad condition. The Austin Fire Department saying it got a call around 1.30 this morning, and when firefighters got there, they say there was a group of people that ran out of that building. By 2 this morning, the fire was under control. AFD says the cause is unknown, but most likely an accident with people inside trying to stay warm. Also this morning, the big thing a lot of kids and parents want to know is school still happening today. Right, we're getting constant updates from districts all across Central Texas, and you can find those scrolling at the bottom of your screen and on KXAN.com throughout the show. So we want to go through some of our largest districts in the area. Austin ISD on a two hour delay. Same with Round Rock, Leander, Pflugerville and Georgetown, among others. We have closures, full closures for Dripping Springs, Bastrop, Del Valley, Hayes Consolidated, as well as Texas State University in San Marcos and the Round Rock campus. Currently, the University of Texas is operating as normal. If that changes, you can check out this special map that we have online where we are keeping adding the universities and districts as the leaders of those campuses make their decisions. If you're wondering why doesn't every school district just cancel today with it being this cold, there's a few reasons. In addition to student safety and parents relying on it, it has to do with school funding. The state requires the equivalent of 180 days of instruction. 2015 state legislature actually tweaked that law. It's now the equivalent of 75,600 minutes to offer a little more flexibility there. State funding is dependent on student attendance for that time and the schools try to build those days and hours into their calendars, including staff instructional days to make sure that they hit those benchmarks. But these bad weather days, also mass sick days and too many other unplanned issues can impact the bottom line. With not everyone feeling the effects of the weather the same way, some districts will instead do later start times to minimize impacts to the school calendar. Let's go out to the airport, and if you are headed there this morning, you may want to check in on whether your flight's still happening. Right. As of right now, four flights into Austin are canceled for today, and 17 out of Austin are canceled. Yesterday, we want to note, we saw about 100 cancellations. So, not a good day if you're traveling, but a little better than yesterday. Yeah, big improvement. 
Meantime, the state's power grid operator, ERCOT, wants everyone to conserve electricity this morning again. This time it's from 6 to 9, as it is expecting high demand from the cold. The current updated supply and demand forecast shows 8 in the morning as the time of most concern. Demand is getting close to the projected supply at that time of energy. And remember, these forecasts, they can change quickly. They're constantly updated, but it is something to keep an eye on. We spoke to the CEO of ERCOT, Pablo Vegas, and he told us there was a great response from Texans heeding the call to conserve so far. We're not expecting that we're going to have to be in emergency operations or have to get to controlled outages. The, the, the mitigation steps that we're taking to prevent that have been very effective so far. The really good coordination across the, 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 the electric generating community has been good. The responsiveness from Texans has been good. All of the, the power plants and that you know we, I mentioned are performing really well. So I expect we're, we're gonna be able to get through this, but we really do need folks to pay attention. And if it's safe and it's, it's okay for them to do so, if they can help conserve a little bit in the morning as well, I think that's gonna make a difference. The CEO added while they expect the grid to hold, there could still be localized power outages. And for those, they urge you to check with your local power provider and their outage operations. We did a quick check this morning and don't see anything too major going on here in the Austin area. Well, if you don't have our KXAN news or weather app, you can download it this morning and stay informed 24 seven. We'll keep you updated throughout the cold snap and you can download the app through the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. The results are in from the 2024 Iowa caucus. Who is sitting in first and where we'll end up seeing the real battle. And as a lot of people continue to work from home, but the big push for full time in the office work may be over. Good morning, this is a live look out from Marble Falls and you can see Lake Marble Falls there. A couple cars going over the, the bridge there. Uh, not really expecting any major icing issues. There's no uh, precipitation falling. Uh, so that is something to keep in mind as you head out on the road this morning. Still chilly though, still potential for slick spots on the road. And this morning, results are in from the 2024 Iowa caucus. Former President Donald Trump cementing his status as the GOP frontrunner in the first in the nation caucuses. The real battle here was for second place. Ron DeSantis emerged in second, claiming just over 20% of the vote. Former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley pulled in just close behind the Florida governor. Also, Vivek Ramaswamy claiming just two delegates and announced he would be ending his campaign. NBC's Hallie Jackson has that wrap up from Iowa. Good morning from Iowa, where we now have answers to these questions about the Republican nominating contest, specifically how much of a grip does former President Trump have on his party here in the state of Iowa? It is a firm grip, as NBC News is projecting the former president to win the Iowa caucuses. There is a real question, as you know, as, as to the second place finish. Would it be Ron DeSantis, the Florida governor? Would it be Nikki Haley, the former U.N. ambassador? It is DeSantis, based on NBC News' projection edging out Nikki Haley for that for that second place finish. It is a state that DeSantis here in Iowa has invested heavily in and now he is suggesting that he will be in this race for the long haul already looking ahead to South Carolina later on this morning and then to New Hampshire which of course is the next state that is going to be voting here in just about one week. You've also got Nikki Haley. She has invested more focus and time in New Hampshire of course the state where things are now starting to shift and she also uh, alluded to her what she believes is long-term viability for this race. So we are turning the corner now. We will see you from New Hampshire in just a little bit coming up on the Today Show. Back to you. And that next primary will be in New Hampshire next week. The Texas primary is set for March 5th. You have until February 5th to register to vote. Well, we are bracing for brutal wind chills and already seen that. We're looking at how this Arctic blast is impacting other parts of the country and Texas. Good morning all, happy Tuesday. Still talking about that Cowboys loss, what went wrong, what happens now, and a former Longhorn playing in the Australian Open. We're heading down under. Let's get a live look this morning from the Wildflower Center where we know it is cold. We're not seeing so much of the icing on the cameras that we were showing you yesterday, but it is still biting out there. Kristen has been tracking it all morning and will continue to. 
This is KXAN Sports, brought to you by Thomas J. Good Henry. morning, all. Hope we're staying warm. Can't really be as cold as the Cowboys were this weekend. A lot was going their way. A hot streak and an Eagles cold streak meant Dallas won the division and would hope to get two playoff games. That's, you know, if you win the first one, which the Cowboys, of course, did not. Ugly against Green Bay on Sunday after seeming, seemingly everything was pointing toward a Dallas win. At least one of those questions now arise. You can expect changes with this franchise, whether that's right or wrong. But before those, the emotion of the loss is still fresh. This is uh, one of my most surprises since I've been involved in sport, period. This is a hurtful loss. Um, you know, we... we we put ourselves in position to play a home playoff game. You know, it was a great, we had a great opportunity. Um, felt really good about the week of preparation. We picked the wrong day to, uh, to have a bad day. Yeah, I mean, frustrated, as you just said, is the, the great word my, for my play. Uh, the way that we came out here and we, we started this game uh, and then just shocked, honestly. Let's head over to the AFC where the Bills beat the Steelers a day ago. So we know who the Houston Texans are going to face in the next round. They get the number one seed, the Baltimore Ravens. Down under we go. Some tennis a day ago as well. The Australian Open, Peyton Stearns, former Longhorn in round one against Kazakina, the 14th overall seed. Stearns able to win the second set here after this hit from Kazakina is out after she dropped the first set. So we head to a deciding third. And a break from Stearns did not go her way. So Kazetkina able to close it out. She holds on to win. Stearns falls in the first round to the number 14 overall seat. Also, Texas women's basketball back in action tonight against Kansas at the Moody Center. That is it for sports. We'll send it back to you. Thank you, Noah. After a four-month delay due to the Hollywood writer's strike, the 75th Primetime Emmy Awards returned with Anthony Anderson as host last night. Yeah, we've got a few wins you may want to note this morning. If you're going to bring it up uh, at the office or in, at the water cooler, Succession won the Emmy for the Best Drama Series, while Sarah Snook and Kieran Culkin won Drama Lead Actress and Actor for their respective roles in the show. The Bear took the Emmy for Best Comedy Series, and Beef won in the Limited or anthology series category. I've seen none of those. Oh, I've Kristen. heard of Succession, but I haven't yeah. heard of any of the okay. other. If you do you like television? <laughs> <laughs> Works I mean, in TV. Depends on the day. I do get a lot of it at work. That's, so when I go I home, I tuning out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I've heard good things. I just I yeah. haven't gone. Are all those Netflix? No. 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 Okay. But this is a good week if people want to bundle up. You can catch up. That's on right. Shows. Yeah, girl. yeah, you could binge for sure today <laughs> yes. with how cold it's going to be outside. Let me show you what we've got because clouds and radar showing a little bit of cloud cover up to the north. We could see some high passing clouds later this morning, but in general, we are in for a full day of sunshine. Barron's Creek Vineyards camera there in Fredericksburg. It is cold out in the hill country. Let's talk about these numbers because right now we're seeing widespread teens and 20s down to 19 in Austin. If you remember yesterday morning, we actually dropped to 16. That set a brand new record low for us. It's possible we lose a couple of degrees off these temperatures before our warm up kicks in for the day. So we'll be watching these closely, but unfortunately it's not even just the cold air. It's the fact that we've got breezy conditions out there and our wind chills they're struggling they're struggling to stay afloat i mean we've got a wind chill nine here in Austin, one burn it, one below in Fredericksburg, a dangerous wind chill. Make sure you've got that heavy coat. You also want to make sure you've got the mittens, right? The scarf, the beanie, everything you can do to keep that body heat nice and close to you because the wind will be working against you. We've got a kind of a mix here of wind chill advisories and wind chill warnings. The wind chill warning is more of this kind of um, highlighter blue color, if you will. I know on TV it looks the same, so I'm just going to tell you right here the hot the wind chill warning is in effect till 9 a.m. and the wind chill advisory which is more of this lighter blue continues until 10 a.m. tomorrow so it's still going to be cold all day long today we're struggling to reach freezing in many spots I'll go 33 in Austin 
good amount of sunshine to help get us there. But even by Central Texas standards, th this is a cold winter day for us. I mean, 33 is far below the normal of 62. That's where we should be for January, but we're not even going to get close to that. Not today, not tomorrow. What about our skies? Well, we are done with the icing threat. Roads actually look really good this morning, too. I'd be a little cautious maybe on some of the flyovers still, but in general, we should not be looking at anything close to a repeat of what we had yesterday. Sun Sunshine's going to be here today. Sunshine will be with us tomorrow too. Mainly sunny skies, just adding in a little bit of cloud cover late for our Wednesday. When is the next weather maker? Next weather maker is another Arctic cold front. This comes in late Thursday. Not nearly as powerful as the one we saw earlier this week, but it is going to reinforce some of the colder air as we get into Friday and Saturday. You'll notice though, there's no precip with it. Not expecting an icing threat with this second one. I just think it is going to drop our temperature. So we will try and warm up nicely through the middle of this week from the 30s today, 40s tomorrow, 60s by Thursday. But then we're right back down with highs in the 40s Friday and again on Saturday. So our seven day forecast shows temperatures in the 30s today getting down to the teens overnight. Less wind, but that's still brutal cold. You'll notice the temperatures will steady, steadily climb, I should say, and not only in the overnight, we're still going to be cold. That 45 degrees Friday and Saturday with those winds kind of giving us the same flavor of what we'll see today. So don't put away that heavy coat yet, but do know there's a good opportunity. You need your umbrella late Sunday into Monday and maybe even beyond that two week outlook showing very high confidence that we're going to be in for a wet week next week. We'll continue to provide updates as we get closer. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Kristen. And look at this heavy snow in Colorado in the mountains there prompting several road closures this week. This video is from Georgetown, Colorado. Snow packed roadways remaining a major issue there and the winds compounded the misery. Zero visibility at times. Colorado Department of Transportation shut down roads for safety reasons. You see those cars being redirected and those whipping winds there. As the roads closed, mountain towns started filling up with snow. Some areas seeing more than four feet. We know several schools are going to be closed today because of those dangerous conditions from the Arctic front. Back a little closer to us, take a look at this video. Our neighbors in San Antonio were dealing with light freezing rain mixed with sleet. Of course, that made travel difficult. So several schools and universities there will also be closed today due to the hazardous icy conditions. They say a hard freezing rain warning may remain in effect in San Antonio until Wednesday morning. If you are driving out on the roads, we do have some advice for these conditions. You want to give yourself a little extra distance from other cars. Go slow. Don't slam on the gas or the brakes. Take your turn slowly and that will reduce sliding if there is ice out there. Well, we had this warning yesterday, but we're going to give it to you again. We know there's so many of you who enjoy Barton Springs year round, even on a cold weather day. And even if I don't understand it, but we're <laughs> happy for you. The Austin Parks and Rec Department, though, wants to let you know they're going to be opening at 11 this morning and the pool will be swim at your own risk. Now, the underground spring fed pool will actually feel warmer because the temperature stays constantly between 68 to 70 degrees. Turning now to news from the Israel Hamas war as it surpasses its 100 day mark. Israel is vowing to increase its military pressure and to keep fighting. Yeah, meantime, Yemen's Houthi rebels continue their attacks on cargo ships in the Red Sea. This is despite a wave of American and British strikes designed to stop them. Yesterday, the U.S. military says the Houthis used a ballistic missile to attack an American owned ship off the southern coast of Yemen. That ship, the Gibraltar Eagle suffered some damage, but no one was hurt and it was able to continue over on its journey. This comes a day after the Houthis reportedly fired a missile towards an American warship. That missile was intercepted by an American fighter plane. The U.S. and the U.K. launched more than 100 missiles into Houthi-controlled territory last Friday in an operation President Biden says was designed to deter them from carrying out further attacks. Also this morning, newer models of Apple watches should be available for sale once again. U.S. Customs and Border Protection decided it would permit imports of Apple Series 9 and Ultra 2 watches. This decision revealed in a court filing, Apple is currently contesting the ban imposed by the U.S. International Trade Commission. 
It all stems from a patent dispute with a medical technology company which claims Apple infringed on its blood oxygen reading technology. That feature has been in Apple smartwatches since 2020. Hybrid work arrangements continue to be successful when offices emptied out during the pandemic. A lot of people, they were unsure whether they'd ever be returning back to the office five days a week. Now with just 20% of workers fully on site in 2023, according to one poll, the mix of remote and in-office work is proving a winning compromise for both employees, but also their higher ups. NBC's Christine Roman spoke to a workplace culture expert about why the big push for full-time office work may be over. Have CEOs accepted they have to be more flexible? I think CEOs are being more adaptable. They've realized that trying to force people back into the office wasn't working. It was actually shooting them in the foot. And so they need to adapt their culture and their working style to the needs of the workforce because it is your talent ultimately that helps you drive the results that you're trying to achieve. And it might not stop there. Ahead on today this morning, how the four day work week could soon become a reality for more Americans. Plus, what's driving the workplace culture changes this year? Four day work week sounds pretty nice. For those listening in on the KXAN Today podcast, thanks for being with us. Here's what we're looking at at five. As we continue dealing with these freezing temperatures, medics are weighing in on how much cold our bodies can handle before we're at risk of serious problems.